Hello. Welcome to Box Office Showdown. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your hand? I didn't even see that. <laughs> what is that? Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. D Bart. Let D. me see your hand. <laughs> right, let's go. So, okay. So where are we? Right. We'll go. Oh my god. Okay. Welcome everyone. Who who uh, is the chat open already? Do we got that going uh, yeah. on? Are we still working on. Ah. Ryan Earl Thomas and Crazy Fox. What is this say on your hand? You just read it when you watch it back. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh okay. Hello. Thank you for joining us for Box of a Showdown. We'll be talking about the what the movies of the year, our, yeah. our favorites, what came out. We'll review Bumblebee. Bumblebee. As well, which is also came out this week. Yeah. Uh, who do we got at the table? Let's uh, everyone go down the line. Which, who, who What's up? It's your boy Johnny P three one three, aka Johnny Dub Kicks. I'm here, as you know. You just see me on a little show called Hand Chin Hangout and on Super Real Showdown and our hashtag Wrestling Show. Good to see everybody. And hello, I'm Justin Kizan. You probably know me from Hand Chin Hangout and um, various other things. I'll pop up here and there. And I'm the cleaner. I clean everything up here. And uh, you can see me on uh, the Ranger shows on Saturday. Oh, I guess both days, Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And the Superhero Show. And Quest for Player 2. And the wrestling show. The wrestling show. You're busy. Mm -hmm. Busy guy, busy guy. <laughs> what about you, eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on uh, the Ranger, uh, Ranger Wrap Up, Hedge and Hangout. Are you? Oh, I'm Jezzer. There it is. Yeah, you it guys is. don't know. Cookie Face Army. Cookie Face Army, bro. What does it say there? <laughs> God, you can't believe I have to watch. All right, come on. Yeah, I'll watch it later. Yeah, oh, All right, cool. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, thanks for joining us. Uh, do you guys want to start? Did you literally say, I can't believe I have to watch this show? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? Well, they are, so thank you. Maybe. <laughs> you can be anywhere else in the world, oh, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. <laughs> Let's talk about. All right, so I, I actually want to have a have a want a, a healthy debate about this mm. before we get into this. Uh, we did talk about Aquaman on the yeah. Superhero News Network, Boo. so I feel it's only fair that we talk Who about its counterpart that? that came out this week, Bumblebee. Yeah, Bumblebee. 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 What's his name? Bum B one two seven. Yeah, so B127. It, B127. He's, he's the Mexican B from The Simpsons. Jesus. No, not that guy. <laughs> oh. Who is No, he? no, no, no. <laughs> but Bumblebee, he's a Transformer. Yeah. Yes. He's a scout. Mm -hmm. So let's uh let's uh let's review this for a second. Uh-huh. Um the movie takes place in the 1980s, which is a nice change of pace. That's when uh, Transformers was at its height. Yep. We also get uh, guest star. We got stars in this movie: Haley Steinfeld and yep. John Cena. Haley Steinfeld, and some guy. Yep. Uh, John Cena. I can't Ooh. see him. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just see Haley Sanfield and Bumblebee. Exactly. And also some jets in the background. <laughs> special guest voices from Angela Bassett, mm -hmm. Justin Thoreau. Ooh. Uh, Wait, who was Justin Thoreau? Was he Justin the other? Thoreau was the the other the one. The blue guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 The no name. Also, uh, Dylan O'Brien. Mm -hmm. Dylan O'Brien. Cupcake? Got uh, dropkick. 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 Okay. Um, yeah, so this movie had a, a pretty good cast. But let's talk about this because it took it only took transfer years to get here. <laughs> talk about this. Okay. I've been trying to figure out a way to be diplomatic about this. Mm -hmm. Damn it, screw Michael Bay. Ah. Oh. Michael Bay's a producer yeah. on this. But no, here's the thing, though. The reason why is because it's like, at least you just said, it took us 18 years to get here, mm -hmm. and oh my gosh, we got a Transformers movie that looked like Transformers. Yep. It's like, the thing about this, though, for me, like, the Marvel has been so successful because Marvel embraces, like, what their characters are. They embrace the costume. Wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not true. You can't say that. Because none of the characters in Guardians of the Galaxy, with the exception of Groot and Rocket, are the characters from Guardians of the Galaxy. Majority of the Marvel characters. Like, Cap looks like, like Cap. Black Panther looks like Black Panther. Ant-Man is not Hank Pym from the Marvel comics. All right, all right. Let me say Aunt this. May from Spider-Man Homecoming is not Aunt May. No. Eh, she's a version of Aunt May. Yeah, yeah she's Ultimate Aunt May. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cop-out, man. No. I don't think... I disagree with what you said with Marvel. I do agree with what you said about Transformers. Yeah. Though. Well, here's the thing. Let me finish this first. Because here's the thing, though. Because... I disagree with your disagreement. Because think about this, though, is that when it comes down to it, Marvel knows how to embrace the cheesiness of their characters, whether it be, like, the costumes or the story or the background or whatnot. And I hear what you're saying about Guardians, but the thing about this is that that was after they had, like, a slew of, like, successful movies, and that was one of the problems where, like, you know what? We can change this up. Because as I was watching this film, the thing about it is, though, is that, like, with Transformers and this Bumblebee movie, they embrace the G1. They embrace yeah. the G1 Transformers. But I think there's a huge and, difference from that, though. From I don't, though, because the reason why is because, like, when we look at Avengers, for example, 
example. Mm-hmm. Avengers stay true to what Avengers series. Like but Thor doesn't. Origin. Thor, Thor and Ragnarok is completely different from any iteration in the comics. What about Thor? And one? neither is Iron Man. They, they, like if you look at Tony Stark from what the comics was to what he is now, that's it's a complete departure from the character. I think that what the difference is is that Marvel's movies inform the comics, mm-hmm. which is not what Transformers is doing. No, Transformers, no. Transformers car- no. cartoons are informing what the what this version of this is now. No, yeah. I disagree because the thing about it is those because Marvel still the mo- the comics still inform the movies. They start as the blueprint and then they go from there and they elevate. But yeah. we still see moments of the comics within the film. Storyline wise, maybe, but not definitely not origin or personality. Origin? How do you not see the origin there? How is Tony Stark's origin? Oh, I disagree. Uh, no, I don't. I don't agree. I, I mean, I agree with the the origin, but the personality. Robert Downey Jr. is isn't and wasn't Tony Stark. But here's the thing, though. So again, how should I say this? The thing about it is, is that as I said before, the comic star is the blueprint, and then you build off of there. You change the things that you need to change. You make slight variations. But that's but that negates but you, what you said earlier. No, because again, I said they embrace museum with Iron Man. They embrace that again. They embrace his origin. They embrace again the armor and everything like that. They embrace bringing in War Machine. They embrace the like when he goes to his drunken stage and everything like that. They just change. Well, they the never game. embraced him going to his drunken stage. That never happened. They kind of the did a little bit in the second movie, like a little bit, but then he go too far. No, he does. He, he doesn't PG. drink in the movie. Yeah, because they had to keep it PG because of the rating. But here's what we'll say though, because we have to move on to the next topic. But going back mm-hmm. to it though, but unlike the Michael Bay films, right? The thing about this is the Michael Bay films never stay true to the G1 at all. The thing about this will accept a name, and think about this that was the big problem because as you watch this. It was so good to see Transformers that look like Transformers, and so that was like a big part of it for me. All right, granted, and I will say here too though that they changed the like, Bumblebee's personality slightly, but I'm talking too much. Whatever people think. Well, let me let me answer half of that question, or yeah. half of what you just said. It's not a question; it's more of a comment. But I I I think I li- I'm a, I'm a fan of the Marvel movies, but I de- I definitely think there's a Marvel bias, mm-hmm. uh, and what I mean is that even when Marvel comes out with shitty movies, and let's be honest. Doctor Strange is not good. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of bad Marvel movies out there, but people turn a blind eye to them because it has the enamor of Marvel on them. Guardians of the Galaxy two, personally for me, I thought it was I thought it was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, yeah. and if you yeah, and if you go back and look at somebody like Peter Quill, mm-hmm. that is not the Peter Quill from the comics is not the Peter Quill in the movies. Mm. Neither is Drax. Drax is completely different. So here's the thing I'll say. So let me do it this way. The thing about it is, though, if we went up to, like, your average, like, you know, maybe 24-year-old, and we're like, hey, what do you know about, again, again, this is assuming before, like, the movies came out, the Michael Bay movies, what do you know about Bumblebee? Oh, he's the yellow bug from blah, blah, and he does this and blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Who's Drax? The fuck is a Drax? The thing about it is, though, is that I don't they, disagree with they that. changed the characters because they knew, guess what? They could change something that didn't, that didn't, that mm-hmm. wouldn't impact the fan base. People weren't as attached to it. But the thing about it is, is when you change Transformers, you're changing, you, they, Michael Bay changed organically what they are. Right. But, that, but I think you're arguing almost the same points because I think that with Transformers, you got to think, if you're talking to an average human being that doesn't know what a Transformer is, what's it matter where you start? Mm. No, because here's the reason why I say that. Because again, the fan base again. So it's like this. When but the, it comes look, you to, gotta admit, the Transformers fan base was not huge. Even now, it's still not huge. The Transformers fan base is there. And oh was, yeah. How many people? How much movie is this movie? How much money is this movie tracking right now? Yeah. I think but that wait, but time out. Is that because sorry, Justin, you right. over this? Is that because of the Transformers fan base, or is that because of the bad blood they had going into this movie? The thing about this, as I was going to see this film, and I had already heard from people who had already saw it, they was like, "Oh, this is a good movie." I was like, "Hey, do you want to go see this?" And they were like, "No, I don't want to see another Transformers movie again." Yeah, because of the bad blood that Michael Bay had already established. That's why I started off with screw Michael Bay. Had he again fought? Because the thing about the comics is though, is that the reason why you adapt a property is because something in that property was being done right. Mm-hmm. You adapt the property and then you can make changes and build upon it because again as a film person you understand this you don't just adapt the comic straight from the page to the screen you make changes to make it work as a movie listen I don't, dis- about, I don't disagree with so, that but the thing about it is, is that when you, so the main point that I'm making here is Marvel when they adapt things they know how to go back to the heart of it because they, they change it completely well not all the time well, like with Spider-Man Homecoming they embrace the essence of what makes Spider-Man work Spider-Man doesn't even have an origin in Homecoming because it, we already know what it is exactly. I, no, I understand yeah, that but also we sat six I, moves ahead of it. Yeah. I feel like with Spider-Man well, listen well, like with, with would Bumblebee? Let's just like let's just like focus on Bumblebee for a second. Because like I, I I think what Johnny's trying to say is Bumblebee feels like they actually are treating Marvel thing aside. They feels like they're treating the respect of what worked in the '80s cartoon or what people grew up with Transformers. They finally put this movie in a context that feels like that's the thing that people grew up with and liking. And I think that's the right direction that they should have started. Back in 2007 with the first movie, and ten years, you know, eleven years later, they finally made a 
cohesive, enjoyable Transformers movie based on the property that feels like Transformers. See, so yeah. my opinion on yeah. this is I, I agree with a lot of your points, but I do feel that Transformers doesn't have a strong enough fan base. That literally could have been any other character in Transformers, mm-hmm. and it was just the story that they attached to, along no, with the emotion. No, I honestly do no. believe that. <coughs> that could have been no. Cliff Jumper for all no, we can. No, no, so they killed Cliff Jumper. No, no, that ain't gonna be. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I care about Cliff that. Jumper, reason, man. Huh? I care about Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, really? Yeah. There's always one. But here's, <laughs> but here's the thing, though. The reason why I was bummed, because, again, Bumblebee, for that G1 story, was the second lead. I think, think you're giving is, too much credit the, to what yeah. Transformers meant to, to... I don't think it has this 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 giant fandom that you think it does. Dude, but here's the thing, though. So, like, what do you think... So, here's the thing. I believe it does, because, one, mm-hmm. that one Paramount already funded, like, in the first movie, because they knew the fan base was there. And the movie did success because a lot of the fan base showed up General for General moviegoers showed up for it. And right. the fan base showed up as well, because don't forget, though... Throughout the years, the, the the Transformers property has still been putting out toys, has still been putting out comics, has still been putting out video games, and people have been following and everything. I don't, like I don't disagree so, with you. I don't disagree with you. I, what I'm saying is this: is I don't think it was as popular. We do have a we, super chat from the Blur. I thought Charlie would become uh, would become mom from the first from movie. The first movie. Uh, that, she would be too young. That wouldn't really make a lot of sense yeah, because she doesn't. Well, not just that; it's just like the mom doesn't even act a thing like Charlie at all. So, uh, well, this is also crazy. definitely a soft reboot, mainly oh, yeah. because uh, the Transformers. Uh, such a good reboot. Optimus ends up on Earth in the late '80s and not in 2000. Mm-hmm. But, but I they think had Simmons in there. John. Uh, John yeah, 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 they did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that Transformers. I'll put it to you like this: I don't think Transformers or a lot of the '80 franchises are as popular as people want to think they are. Mm-hmm. Mainly because. It's just not the world we live in right now. G.I. Joe? Joe, wait, Joe, so here's the thing. Joe, really? Yeah, 100%. Really? Joe, really? Joe, so, Joe, so here's the really? thing. I understand what you're trying to make, but the problem with it is those that a lot of those franchises are still going today because I was thinking about after I saw this. And I think then, that's not a fair... I, then, I think My then, Little Pony is a completely then, different thing. Then, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, another property that was made back then, mm-hmm. is still going strong today. Oh, it's still going strong? I, I, that's a, that's a are, stretch. Well, Teenage Maybe Mutant Ninja Turtles is not going strong. No, they absolutely not. They literally just had a movie a couple years ago. They literally keep coming A couple back. years ago. They literally just have another Nickelodeon cartoon show on right now. Is it finish. successful? The first one was... They, is it successful it, now? But here's the thing, though. How many iterations have they done? They continue to reboot yeah, it and I'm change it. I'm not saying it. that. Same thing with Transformers. There's a point where Transformers was never off there. My right. apologies, we're young, our producers. Hey, relax. Inside. This is what the show's about. It's supposed to be a debate. But I think that... I think that here, here's here's what the what the point is. But no, the point was is that you said those '80s franchises aren't carrying over, and the thing about it is, though, yeah, because Pee Wee Herman's huge now. Uh, did I say Pee Wee Herman? That's or? my point. No, like, you can't. No, no. But I said the more popular ones, the ones we still see TV shows and movies for. And by the way, is Pee Wee Herman even show coming bro? back? Nostalgia. Yeah. And no, yeah, he Pee didn't. Herman, he, he had, had a show. show coming back. He had a show. You know, he's another one coming back. In go ahead, go ahead, Justin. Okay, like. <laughs> Here's the thing with here's the thing with this movie. I would say is that like right now, um, box office will be something that will figure me out later. I know it's not hitting strong because like Johnny said, it's like five movies in of people not being happy with five movies. Yeah, but they were showing up. They were showing up from the for the past movies. Though. But here's the thing. But they've been showing up less than that. So fatigue. Right now, it's fatigue. It's fatigue. So Look at it. You had Transformers. Well, I mean, you, you because had, it's not been good. It's but been, not just that. Just getting but, worse. But also, and but if you look at all just, the '90s properties in mm-hmm. movies in cinema, they just haven't done well box office wise. Well, fair. Yeah. Look at look at Ninja Turtles. Is one of them. Mm-hmm. Power Rangers is another yeah, one. For sure. Them. For sure. Bumblebee is another one of them. That was, that, Power the 90s. <coughs> regardless, it's that nostalgia factor is worn off with the exception of superheroes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's, like, it's a shame too. Well, I mean, well, it's, it and it, well, it's a shame because this is a solidly entertaining movie that, I mean, even if I didn't know anything about Transformers, I liked what I saw and it gave you a lot of information about it that would be fitting in the genre, you yeah. know? I mean, it's definitely like, it's Iron Giant, ET, etc with Transformers but it's it's got its heart in the right place and it is kind of like being like kind of clouded by, by literally like other big movies that are coming out within the same week mm-hmm. uh, which is a shame because it's a good fun movie exactly and to go to Joe's point about how like superheroes are the only nostalgic thing working right now mm-hmm. I mean let's be honest here the thing about this is that we're listening like what Hollywood goes through where they go through a wave of something's their favorite thing and every movie they make is that favorite thing yeah. for a long time period they did that with westerns mm-hmm. and the thing about it is though they're currently doing that with superheroes because the problem with it is though superheroes never had a nostalgic moment because they never really been successful during the 80s and the 90s as superhero films mm-hmm. except until we get to the movies well, like Superman Blade Superman and Batman were oh yeah and then like Blade and that was when I was like oh shit we can do this with other stuff but the thing about it is 
episodes that these 80s properties go through waves. At one point, they're popular and they're being made to television shows, movies, and comic books. But then at one point, they kind of go back down to popularity and the fan base carries them. But then all of a sudden, they surge back up and they do it again. Yeah. Well, Turtles had that. Turtles did three movies. Well, I'm sorry, they did two movies. And then some, <laughs> something else. And then what did they do? They put out Turtles into the shadows, and that was a testing round. And they were like, okay, let's try putting this out again. But here's the thing, though. Let's be honest. In 10 years, will we be surprised when there's another Turtles movie showing up? No, but no, I think Not that's... at all, because it will happen again, because it's a proven thing. No, I don't Power think it's Rangers, a proven thing. as you pointed out a moment ago, was unsuccessful, even though it's a 90s property, not an 80s property. But as Hasbro has just acquired that license, the very first thing you say is, like, we're going to try again with a movie. And it's like, really? Because they know, again, the fan base is there and want to carry it. I don't think that's a proven thing, mainly because if that were the case, Listen, I think that the one thing that you're correct about, and I think you're misinterpreting it, the one thing you're correct about is Hollywood has ran out of fresh ideas. I mean, that's come, that's mm. straight up come to a fact. Look, A Star is Born is going to get nominated for an Oscar, and that's something else we'll talk about later tonight. But yeah. guess what? This is the fourth time they're remaking that movie. A lot of people don't know that, but mm. this is the fourth iteration of the same exact movie. Right. It's not a different story, and it's not even a different title. It's legitimately the same thing. So we got to take that into consideration. When mm -hmm. it comes to Ninja Turtles, will they do another one in 10 years? I'm sure they will, mainly mm -hmm. because they that's what they've relied upon. With the reason why I think comic book movies are successful, I think they had their downfall back in the early 2000s because they were, they were so fresh and new. However, now they're realizing that with comic book movies, they don't... That's a genre in itself, which can be subgenres. For example, you have Guardians of the Galaxy, that's a space epic. Mm -hmm. Right. You have something like Aquaman, that's three movies in one. Every version of Captain America that's come out is three different genres of film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have they can tell genres within that within that element. Right. I think mm -hmm. that's what makes that fresh. Right. With 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 something like Ninja Turtles, you, that's what I'm saying. But, like, what are you gonna get a futuristic turtles? Are we gonna get a I mean, yeah, because here's the thing, people who the know show. the fan base, yeah, the fourth season took place in space. How's that? Doing? Anything about the, mm -hmm. the, 20, the 2012 yeah, show? It, it did. It really did really well. well. And then it had went on to another season yeah. afterwards. Yeah. The thing about this is that the problem with this is that it kind of goes back to like Michael Bay and what I was saying about Bumblebee getting back on topic. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is is that when a franchise is heated by someone who understands like what they're doing, who understands like what makes these characters popular, you keep the heart of those characters and you're able to change other things around them. Right. To your point with Guardians of the Galaxy, you just had to make sure you kept the teamwork element there of a bunch of misfits being brought together. Together, and then you can change things about them because That's the again, Mighty Ducks. You just described the plot of the Mighty Ducks. I mean, as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah sure. Included. But, yeah, but that's what made the Guardians of the Galaxy comic successful. So the thing about Izzo is, like, going into this, Michael Bay, as much of my original point, he never really understood what made Transformers, like, touch the heartstrings of, like, so many people. He knew how to make a big-budget movie with a bunch of explosions, and with a bunch of, like, American flags, with a bunch of, like, you know, um, objectifying women and all these different things, but he didn't understand the heart of Transformers. Right. This current director and writer have come in here, and they've made a film where was like, well, you know what? Let's go back to the basics, and let's go back to those things, while also making making again a different type of movie because technically honestly when you watch this movie for me i was like oh shit it's et but with a robot have you right. ever seen the toys that made us yeah. yeah yeah yeah. have you ever seen the transformers one yes yeah. and they literally say that the reason why they made it it's not because of heart or because of story or anything mm. like that it's a giant toy commercial oh yeah well, okay I mean, we're seriously no, yeah. no 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 she's saying that's what that's general general pause, 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 generals pause, pause, i mean that's pause. what they did said I say, no did i say they made it because of heart oh, oh, oh. no let's be honest here at the end of the day all this stuff is a business so you make this in the terms of being successful but hold money. on wait wait, wait, wait hold on wait, 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 wait. to people's hearts but your argument your argument was about michael bay right essentially what michael bay did with the original transformers movies is essentially what those creators set out to do with their transformers toys in the 80s there's not really a difference there is what is that? Because the thing about it is, though, is that when you look at uh, what they were doing back in the 80s, they were taking an idea and they were building a story and everything around it, and it was a fresh new they idea. Were they, building, were, they were selling toys. Yeah, but again, they were building the black story, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the back story and all these different things <laughs> because they said on the toys that made us, and they were putting all these different things together. We should do a black story. should have more jobs. <laughs> um, the thing about it is, though, is that they built all these different things, and then they put the films out there. Michael Bay was adapting a work. He right. wasn't creating something new. The thing about it is, though, is you're right. Was he in the business to make money and sell toys? Of course he was. But at the same time, though, you're adapting a work. The thing about it is, though, is that that was them coming out the gate. They came out the gate and made something successful mm -hmm. that up until that point had been going for about to 20 sell years. toys. They were successful yeah. at that. Yeah, but guess what? They were selling, selling toys, comic books, and several television shows. Which and they so, did also in the early 2000s. Yeah. yeah, but here's the thing, though. But the movies, as we just pointed out that right now, what's happening with Bumblebee? You just said it's not making money. And the reason it's why... It's not, though. Yeah, and the problem of the reason why is because of fatigue. No, yeah. I think the real reason why is because it's surrounded by so many other movies that are coming out. No, again, I agree. I so you're going to tell me that the movie would still make as little as it's going to right now if Aquaman and Mary Poppins and Spider-Verse were not coming out at all? 
I, well, I was about to say something before that. I was saying that the thing about it is, though, is that I do acknowledge that it is being surrounded by a lot of successful movies. Yeah. However, as I pointed out, when I was trying to get people to go see this movie with me, I had to go see it by myself. The same reason people kept giving it was like, I don't want to see another Transformers That's film. fair. You know, and the thing about it is, though, is because, again, they had so much bad blood. You know, it's funny because, like, that's the same reason what happened with the Out of the Shadows, the second Ninja Turtles movie. Like, I saw it with, you know, hesitation because I thought the first one was okay, not great, the Michael Bay produced one. Walked out, like, kind of loving it. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling people, like, hey, no, that's actually kind of a fun one. You should check yeah. it out if you like the show. If you had fun movies and Ninja Turtles. And everyone understandably went, I, I don't know. I hated that first. I don't like how they look. Yeah. I didn't like how they look in that first movie. And they didn't really change the look. And I'm, I sat there and went, I can't argue that because they didn't change them that much in the second movie. So they look like the same. But I like it. So maybe I'll you know, like, give it a shot. And no one, it bombed and no one really saw it. And the thing about it is though, change can be okay. There's nothing wrong with change. Yeah. But it's about acknowledging if you're successful or not with the change. And the thing about it was though, is that like with Turtles, again, the change didn't go over so well. So maybe going to the second one or where they reboot again, they're probably mm -hmm. going to go back to a basic approach. But right, I also sure, think sure. that at the time when Turtles came out, it just wasn't as popular as, as a franchise. It's, it wasn't, the, the strength of the franchise wasn't there. When Turtles came out Which as one? a feature film, the, the, the more the more recent yeah. Turtles movies, the fran look the, the strength of the franchise wasn't there. Mm -hmm. That's why the Turtles wasn't as successful. I think that's mm -hmm. it's a little bit there, but also with the fact that it's a sequel to a first movie that wasn't really like blowing people out of the water. I agree. And so a sequel to that is yeah, like that makes sense for a reaction for a second one is, I why would I watch a sequel to a movie I really didn't ask for? So, I agree, and 100%. so which is a shame because I like that one, and the same it's going on with Bumblebee. It's like, it's a movie that's legitimately better than any Transformer movie that came. I out before. also agree, I... and people are kind of feeling like that. I, uh, I think we're just gonna see Mary Poppins with my family and stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know. But I may disagree though because you're, you're <coughs> saying that the first Turtles movie that recently came out, you said the reason it wasn't successful because the fan base wasn't there. Hundred percent. Yeah, I disagree with that. The cartoon the, came out in 2012. But the cartoon well, the movie, didn't. The movie come out. Huh? 20, 2014. Yeah. yeah, so here's the my first movie. This is my reason. Yeah. And this is the reason why. So Turtles in Time did kind of kill it for a while because they had made first two successful movies mm -hmm. and then they, the third the one, one kind of killed it. The one in 2007 was good though. The animated movie. The animated yeah. movie, yeah. But then going into this and Jessica getting back because he's a uh, Turtles expert. But then when they did the 2012, um, 2014 movie, the show had been out for two seasons. The show was being raved by everybody. It was like kids really loved it. Well. Old fans loved it because yeah. they were bridging and bringing everything together. It was doing really well. Yeah. In the meantime, while that was going on, they still had the other new administrators they did it beforehand who they just did a anniversary episode where they brought the current like Turtles animation forever. with uh, yeah Turtles Forever so that had been done really well the comics were on jam because oh, they yeah. kind of went back to like the basics thing one sec I know you want to talk but give me one sec and so that was all doing well so I think the fan base was there but now this is the reason why I think the movie was unsuccessful one the bad blood of Michael Bay because Michael Bay's name was attached to mm -hmm. it. Yes. Two, a lot of leaks that come out beforehand where they said, wait, um, they're aliens? And then people kind of like heard yes. that before end of time too. I think that tainted as well. Then three, the look of the turtles because here's the thing though, it goes back to my original point about like why Bone Bee is so good. It's because when you look at it, the look, you connect with the look. Yeah. And so because you connect with the look, it's like, oh, it brings back the nostalgia feeling for people who not even were just fans of it, but people who just saw it in passing so they all come to show and support it. But because they did those things at Turtles, that's what I think tainted the water for them. I'm gonna hold on. That's, Let me, going, that's what's going on with Sonic right now. Let me make the it's opposite. Really I'm gonna make the opposite Jezzer argument. Talk. Jezzer talk. hasn't said anything. Wait a minute. And he is also a Turtles expert. <laughs> Joseph, let Jezzer speak. That's because you want the final word. But go ahead, Jezzer. Because I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the next thing. Because I because everything you said, I have an exact rebuttal for it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I think that uh, that everybody just had a bad taste for uh, for what for Bumblebee. Why they didn't? That's why they didn't. They didn't come back. Like just. Like going movie after movie, the the box office was cut in half. Mm -hmm. The opening of was just cut in half, just based off fans not enjoying enjoying what they saw before. So yeah, I I kind of understand where this is coming from, but it's not fair to this movie yeah. to not hit those numbers because of because of like the bad taste that was left in their mouth. But I think I'm, the the numbers are bad now, but that's also that's not just because of the movie. Um, the movie people think it's bad. It's it's going up against Aquaman too. Is that what I said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 just placed in a bad spot. But he's placed in a bad spot. Hold on. So it's both all right. So Jezza just spoke. Now hey, it's my turn. Go ahead, Skip Bayless. So what you got? here's Skip here's Bayless. the whole point of this. You you just mentioned that a lot of this was because of the predecessor, wait, which, wait, which handled the. We're talking about turtles and why turtles was successful. That's right. And that's what you were talking about. That's what you're talking about, right? Is that is that right or wrong? We were talking about right that turtles movie was not. So let me let me take you to a little bit of a different journey on the same kind of dynamic, except the opposite. So the Dark Knight franchise was one of the biggest franchises in comic book comic book history. Right. However, 
Christopher Nolan was still attached to the Man of Steel. Man of Steel was not that. Also, if we're speaking of just franchises just alone with superheroes, Aquaman's tracking to do $150 million this weekend at the box office. Mm -hmm. However, its predecessor, Justice League, mm -hmm. Justice League mm -hmm. did almost nothing mm -hmm. compared to that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you, it's hard to, it's very difficult to compare that, like its predecessor, mm -hmm. to, to what's coming out now. Oh no, okay, okay. Tag now me, hold tag on. Me All right. Yeah, there's one that I'm yeah, gonna uh, Okay, let me try. Oh, oh. Here's the thing, oh, like oh. I understand that point of view uh, to a certain degree, but. I don't, but I will explain why. Well, just... But here's the thing, like, is, is really saying Aquaman the same movie as Justice League? Is that a fair comparison? If, if, if it's look, if because it, it's, is it, is these it, are two very different. Movies. I agree with you, but is is Bumble is it the fair comparison to say that it's a Michael Bay Transformers and a Bumblebee Transformers? <clears throat> okay, I mean, okay. Now here's here's where I'm seeing the point to a certain to a point, right? <laughs> is that because I'm Bumblebee? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because Bumblebee is also a spinoff movie, sure, of Transformers, mm -hmm. and Aquaman technically a spinoff movie of Justice League and Man of Steel. So, I think the thing with Aquaman right now is that it's promising so much different uh, aesthetics and a bigger, it's just a totally different palette yeah. than Justice Bumble League. But Bumblebee's doing the Aquaman's same thing. Aquaman's tracking but, to be uh, 70 million this uh, three-day weekend. And here's the thing, like, people at the end of the day, I think there's excitement for superhero movies regardless. And I think Aquaman's bringing a lot of different things to the party. Uh, Bumblebee is bringing, what it's bringing is... And I like the movie, I won't point out, like the movie, but it's also bringing something that's familiar and maybe even too familiar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is the, f the classic old friend with cool creature. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's, it's, and that's it's, not, it's a, that's not new. It's a person oh, yeah. and a dog story. <laughs> it's, it's not, like it's, bound. that's not new. And, he, and, and Aquaman Boomerang. isn't, and to be fair, Aquaman's not blowing anyone out of the water. But people are intrigued intended. because it's new. <laughs> because visually, it's doing some new fun stuff yeah. mm -hmm. that Bumblebee is just doing. Bumblebee's doing solid stuff that we've seen before. Sure, mm -hmm. I agree with that. And Aquaman looks like, and you know, how do you feel about it? Aquaman is swinging for the fences mm -hmm. and everyone's mm -hmm. like going, did I just see like an octopus and someone's writing that? I don't want to see that movie. <laughs> did an octopus play the drums? Yeah. Is it a little mermaid? Yeah. yeah. We under the sea? I heard there's a okay. sequence where there's seahorses as soldiers. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Like that's what Aquaman's promising. Bumblebee is... Look, we're doing solid stuff this time. More Spielberg-y thing. Mm -hmm. Which I'm like, that's cool, but that guy has a, is riding a seahorse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Are well, those sharks... freaking sharks with laser beams yeah, attached to their the heads? Really <laughs> I, don't, I don't disagree with that, but my whole point was that I think that <coughs> if, we, if we have to use the predecessor argument for one, mm -hmm. why can't it attach to the other? I think that's... Okay. You ready? You know what? You... Okay, so here's the reason why. Execution. The thing about it is, is, you brought up Batman. I'll talk about Batman. The thing about it is, you can't execute. Nobody knows that if they haven't seen the movie talking, yet. I'm not talking. But I was saying oh, the more that was saying the blah blah blah. Say what? So he's saying though, in today's <laughs> world. Oh wait, was, hold on. Jezzer was talking. You didn't get a chance to talk. Oh, go ahead, Jezzer. I was just. So oh, thank you, Jezzer. So Jezzer wasn't talking anyway. So he, going back to it, so Batman begins. The reason why it was different is because you're right. The thing about it is, is that it's not execution. Low key, not only happens when the movie comes out, it happens beforehand. Because let's be real, before movies come out, we hear leaks and things about this all the time. The next Star Wars movie hasn't come out, but everyone's keeping their movie ears to the ground about leaks and possible story details and things like that. With Batman, when they put out the last Batman movie, when it was the beginning of the franchise, it was the title of it, Batman Begins, mm -hmm. which is a reference to the comic book Batman Begins, which is an amazing graphic novel, which tells the beginning of Batman's career. So all of a sudden, you had all this goodwill from Batman fans, like, oh, you're going back to the base, you're going back to the drawing board. Okay. And then two, when all the leaks and the different things like that started coming about it, you saw Batman that could turn his neck that was an improvement from the last franchise where they couldn't even pull that off. And so you had all these like goodwill moments going on with it. So guess what? A lot of the bad blood from the last franchise, you had undone. <coughs> you had undone when Batman Begins came out. Going back to the Turtles point, again, you probably could have been very successful with that. But because of Michael Bay and a couple of the decisions that kept leaking out, bad blood had been built up before they went into it. Yeah. So, first of all, that Batman wait, couldn't wait, wait, turn wait, his wait, neck. Wait, 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 was talking. He wasn't talking, actually. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so that wasn't a reboot, actually. I mean, not only that, uh, <coughs> Batman couldn't turn his neck. That's number one. He did turn his neck. Not Batman, Batman Begins. Batman, yeah, not Batman, Batman oh, Begins. Okay, okay, yeah, and yeah, also, right, the vast right, majority right. of the people that went... First of all, that movie tracked the lowest out of the three. Uh, and, and it made the lowest out of the three. Yeah. It was a good movie. Wait, wait, wait. But how many did they make? Three. Three. Yeah. But what so does that have to do with it? They did well enough to get to the two, and then the two was amazing. You can say that. You can say that about. You can say that about fucking Transformers last night. Definitely Ven not. Venom? No, Venom? you can't. You can say that about Venom. Well, uh, 
Hey, it already got a sequel green lit. It got a sequel green lit. Seriously, we can talk about. Seriously, we'll talk about. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was talking. We'll talk about why Venom was successful after this. Go ahead, Joseph, with your point. Go ahead. I was talking. Go ahead, Skip. So let what me just say. Skip? Justin, are you okay? Are you I'm safe? fine. That <laughs> I, I think that. That with Batman, with the mass majority of the people that went to see it, it's the Batman lore. Batman has never not been a flop. Well, in the mm, box office, mm, it, including Batman and Robin. Batman, Batman v Superman. I'm up to that point. Up to that point. Bam! I, but we can we can say that about Transformers with Bumblebee. Yeah. Well, well, it's a it's literally it did, it's not going to make its money back. Okay, so here's the thing because I don't know the numbers behind this. What was the budget of Bumblebee? It's over hundred million dollars. Right. So how whatever they made. So it's still still what Saturday? It's, at least it's, it's at eight point something million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they ain't making that money back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. So that's considered nope. a flop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sadly. I mean, but listen again because of the bad blood. Going to get between. I don't. I, I I don't agree with your argument. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, we all agree that it's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. But and I will say that again two things because I do agree with your one point that it is surrounded by a lot of successful movies that are potentially good. And that so hurts we, it. I don't know why yeah. Paramount decided that day. Exactly. Yeah. And then all like that though, but the bad blood beforehand also hurts it and it's putting it in a very bad spot. All right. Let's talk about this for a second because but, actually can we talk about this though. Yeah. Go ahead. Because here's the thing, I was going to move the subject, but go ahead. I did want to talk about like what you guys think was better between Bumblebee and Aquaman. Well, Bumblebee. I, well, yeah. I haven't seen Aquaman yet. So. Uh, okay. Bumblebee. Well, I was Bumblebee? curious. I was going to ask you a question about Bumblebee. Okay. So, from a mm -hmm. storytelling perspective, you brought up a lot of good points about movies that it kind of drew from from its past. Now, mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg has been somebody that's been attached to this franchise since the beginning. Right. However, this is the movie where you feel the most Spielbergian oh, out sure. of any movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, did those kind of hit those chords with you in terms, did it feel like new for you? <laughs> no, oh, is this that, a thing that you have? Okay. So, well, he's asking me mm -hmm. yeah, directly, so yeah. I will answer. Go for it. Go for it. I think it nails it in a good amount of places. Um, definitely with all this, it, the most important thing is that they made an established relationship between Charlie and Bumblebee. Mm -hmm. And Haley's great in the movie. And mm -hmm. so she's able to really play off all her emotional beats to clearly nothing. Mm -hmm. and, which is amazing. Which is amazing. And stuff is, is really great, I think. And I feel like when the movie plays it smaller, uh, and more emotional, it's the high point of the movie for mm -hmm. me. You know, definitely any point at those, that's where I feel like that's Spielbergery. That's very Spielbergery. Mm -hmm. Spielbergian Spielberg to me. Um, yeah, you did a whole podcast. You should know I did, the same. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I did like way too many episodes of it. But like, <laughs> so that's the case where I do feel like it definitely feels fitting. And it's funny because I think you brought up in your interview with Cena. Uh, that like if it was the '80s, John probably would have been the lead of this movie, and he would have been the the hero. He would have been the hero, and that's funny because I could see that version of that movie as well. Um, but it does benefit with having essentially because let's not lie, like Charlie's story is essentially a redo of the first movie. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like this movie feels like a redo of the first movie, yes. except they decided to do it better. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. actually write clarity and. A motivation between its characters that makes sense. Yeah, you know, here was where where where, where she's saying I'm, I, you know, like she's feeling very emotionally attached to Bumblebee. I buy it as opposed to one scene at the end of the first movie where Sam goes, "I'm not leaving you," and I'm like, "That's it." That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. You you were you were gonna chime in. Uh, where do like as far as box office, where do movies do really well, or where do they base what do they base their box office numbers on? Right now, China. Right. Are you talking physically, or, or, or are you no, talking China, like... that's where, like, China, right? Yeah. yeah. China. It it doesn't release in China until January 4th. Yeah, but that was the that was the problem that Justice League, I mean, uh, Power Rangers had, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that everyone was expecting, our oh, Power Rangers <clears throat> going to kill in China. Mm -hmm. It made $4 million in China. Yeah. So really? it, it, yeah, because it was already oh, yeah. out, and it flopped. And yeah. it, it was word of mouth at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that's a huge mistake. This is why Avengers, and Marvel specifically... Release movie because originally they used to release foreign movies for or release the movies first in the foreign market, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they've stopped doing that and released it on the same day mm -hmm. specifically because of that. So, why do you think Bumblebee is going about doing it like that? They're smarter, oh, Disney's smarter. Yeah, mm -hmm. why do you think uh, Paramount and them are doing it like this? I don't honestly, it baffles me why they chose that date to begin with not 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 just them but every movie around them like mary poppins as well yeah. because i feel that mary poppins could have made more money if it wasn't a like this weekend mm -hmm. like yeah oh well, i guess this weekend no, no not this weekend. like next weekend. next weekend yeah like or tuesday like you literally I mean? on like, christmas day yeah well yeah, i mean you got tuesday. vice but vice isn't mary poppins you know, you know I mean? actually yeah. yeah can i bring that up because it's like that's a good point because 
I I, def- I saw Mary Poppins, actually. Funny enough, I didn't yeah. see But I saw Mary Poppins with my family. Mm-hmm. And I figured, that's a good movie to watch with family on yeah. the holiday. Sure. So why is that released the week before the holiday? I'm with yeah. you on that. Like, on Christmas Day, you have Vice and Destroyer coming out. Yeah. Two high-profile indie movies. And um, and Holmes and Watson. And Holmes and Watson. Oh. Which is amazing. Which is a comedy. It's going to be amazing. And that's fine. But, like, where's... That big holiday draw. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. And, and I agree with you. No, I understand. Agree. Mary yes, Poppins should have opened up on Christmas Day, so that family can watch it on Christmas Day. And Bumblebee. Did, did Mary Poppins open I up think, with Spider Man? Uh, Mary Poppins opened up like two days after. It was, it was like a midweek. Release. It was like a was, four days after Spider Man. It was came December nineteenth, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. was, I believe, a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, this like, but I do agree. This does show like a lot of like bad decision making because the thing about it is like putting this movie out during this time period. And not doing a time would like be more like successful. It's just really weird. Was Fallout Mission Impossible Fallout a Jan- May June release? Do you remember? I believe that that was a July release. It was July release. Maybe this would have been better if it yeah, was July June. July twenty seventh. Mm-hmm. Maybe this would have been better as a summer movie. You know, it's interesting. How did you know that off the top of your head? I mean, he he's a it. huge fan. He's and he has the uh, box office. No, no, no. no. I, uh, <laughs> I was looking forward to Mission Impossible. Here's, Here's one, one thing, Joe. Joe, before you yeah. get to the next point. We got a super chat. Oh! Yeah, see this on Henshin Hangout? Is this a thing? <laughs> Shouldn't <Shin, the laughs> Power Rangers were also being opened up against Guardians of the Galaxy at the time as well, and superhero movie that's also why I bumped over. No, they're no, that's not up against true. Beauty and the Beast. It opened yeah. up. No, it didn't. It opened up against Beauty and the Thanks, Beast. Thanks, Second, Boss, uh, Boss, uh, it, Baby. Boss Baby was the third week. So if it would have opened against Boss Baby, it would probably would have won. But yeah. they decided to go in the second week. Against Beauty and the Beast, yeah. where Beauty which is and the in the Beast. second week, it's still gonna. Why happen. would you do that? Why, Why would, would you go, go against Disney? Here's, here's another fascinating. You would never go against Disney. <laughs> there was another fascinating tweet that Jonathan Kasdan put out, which mm. which kind of harkens back to what we're talking about. Yep, yep. Earlier this week, he said, "I wonder if we would have put Aquaman out this week, or not Aquaman. Sorry, Solo, Solo out this week if it would have done better." Yeah, and I it's think- like. Yeah, probably yeah, it would have would have done better. Here, Maybe the, not this exact week though. Yeah, yeah, there's no, so no. much going on. Probably yeah, probably Christmas time December. I, I want to bring up the point you said earlier about the Marvel movies, specifically like say for example the Cat movies, right? Sure, mm-hmm. sure, sure. And that each Cat movie, you know, superhero movies. This is why I feel like when people say, "Do you think the superhero fatigue coming in?" I'm I like, say the same thing. I feel like not quite because you can do variations of it. Yeah. Yes. And the thing is, the if someone was to like, I had a mild debate with a friend where he's like, "I don't understand if they can make out a Marvel movie every couple months and they make money." How come Star Wars and Han Solo didn't work? And I'm like, because you want to know why? Solo wasn't different enough. Yeah. It was also six months after the release of another Star Wars movie, and it just wasn't different enough. I, I here's here's the downside, and I and I know Johnny's coming from with this. For me, I agree with you because I feel if Solo was more geared towards that Western audience, yeah. That would have that would have been different, but it wasn't marketed that way. No, it wasn't. You know what I mean, but also it wasn't Western. I mean, when you went, yeah. it was like a heist movie. Which, but it which wasn't was enough under Yeah, either. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't was, seen the movie. Like, I, it's it. not a bad movie. It's fun. I like it. And yes, it would have absolutely done way much better in November or December. Yeah. 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 100%. The same movie. Yeah. I would argue. The same so, movie. Like, honestly, like Thor Ragnarok, which is really Thor's best movie, and honestly, maybe top five like superhero movies, mm-hmm. Thor did so well during November because it was like it was a dead time. It took yeah. total advantage of it. Yeah. You take Thor, you put it out like during the summer season, it's a great movie, but does that do as well? Mm-hmm. Maybe not because it's competing against a lot more stuff. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree. But I do agree with the one point you brought up earlier, Johnny, um, is that but for being palp- palpable for a general audience, mm-hmm. as well as maintaining the heart of what the comics did. Mm-hmm. Maybe they not me- might not be the same exact story, but I don't think an average film goer is really going to care. Sure. No. Uh, and and yeah. I think that's kind of like what the business side of, of what this comes down to. Because right. a little like insight here, and I'm going to give his name where he works for, but a good friend of mine works in marketing for like television companies and whatnot. Mm. And the thing is, uh, sorry, for the movie company. So he like works on a lot of these like Thor and all these things before they come out. And weirdly enough, one of the things that they do is before the movies come out, they go into Reddit and they go into the message rooms and look what the actual fans are saying first. Sure. Because they know that's where the word of mouth starts at. Because they want to make sure those guys are appeased and they try to like do certain things for them. And then that influences like some of the moves they make later on. Question for you. Do you think that hurts or helps movies though? Low key it helps because he gave me this great example. Um, Spider-Man yeah, least, 3? No, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. <laughs> okay. So the first Guardians of the Galaxy, remember the very first trailer? Yeah. And it was like really cool to play the music or anything like that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. you, what you might not remember is you didn't hear Groot or Rocket really talk. Yeah. And that was one of the main things that were going on in the chat room. People were like, but what do they sound like? So the very next trailer they did after that, that's why they had those two characters talking. Did, is, and okay. it made that Did they change. announce casting at that point of who were playing them or no? Um, at that point, yeah, because the trailer had dropped and people knew it was Vin Diesel. Yeah. And that's why they did that because they saw a lot of fans worrying about that Vin Diesel would be doing his like, gotcha. Ugh, Every inch is a mile, and oh, you're going to take it a time. That's your favorite movies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I like Fast and Furious. They're fun. 
Oh, I miss <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, I family. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the thing about it is, is that when you go back to the heart and you build from there and then you build and make changes from it, you're going to be successful. Not necessarily. Yeah. 2007, Spider-Man 3. The uh, Sony, mm-hmm. time out, Sony listened to the fans because we got a teaser, a little teaser about Venom, and technically they weren't going to release Venom mm-hmm. in that movie. But we got a little teaser, and fans were just like, oh, we want we want Venom, we want Venom. What did they do? They fast-tracked it. Yeah. They fast-tracked it, and what did that do? Avi Arad wanted Venom. Avi Arad yeah. really yeah, wanted Avi Venom. Avi wanted Venom. That wasn't really the fans. Uh, because to be Avi fair, Avi did here. hear the fans wanting Venom. Yeah. Yeah. No, he. That's what he said. That he did. He Sam, literally said that at a comic con. He, he, no, he, he. He honestly said that in my interview when I interviewed mm-hmm. him not too long ago mm-hmm. for Venom. Yeah, yeah but um, I think, but sorry, Johnny. I was gonna say, but I think the thing about that is though, is that like, if you listen to the fans before you make the movie, it's mm-hmm. like the fans wanted Venom. Then you make a Venom movie with Spider Man in it, you'll be successful. But at that point, he mm-hmm. was like, oh, they want Venom, and the most of the movie had already done. Yeah. That's the reason why if you look at the Spider Man three, if you literally go through and edit out. All the Venom stuff, you yeah. just watch a Sandman story, like, oh shit, this is actually a good movie. Because the thing about the scenes, like, where Sandman's like trying to, like, he's getting his powers, trying to pick up his daughter's picture, all these different things, it was a like Sandman meant to be movie. Right. They forced Venom at the last minute. So I will agree with you. You it's think about, the movie would have been strong enough if it was just Sandman? Sandman? I think originally yeah. their early plans also was going to be uh, Vulture. Vulture. Yeah. And I, I, I thought Mysterio also. Am I wrong about that? Some, I thought it was yeah, Mysterio. No Lizard yet. Not, not yet. Yeah. Lizard would probably been four. Like, honestly, Five. like, yeah, because that situation, I don't think that was just, like, really, because the fans say stuff, I don't think that was a money grab. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't really some of the fans, that was just a money grab we were trying well, to make. Like sometimes the fans kind of ruin. Well, like, speaking on the opposite I'm, spectrum I of that, though, that. I mean, yeah. Last Jedi kind of is that scenario, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, Here we go. The fans, <laughs> I do a Star Wars show every week. So That's I, fair. I mean, Last Jedi kind of is that. Like, the fans... Listen, I, I like the movie, yeah. personally. Mm-hmm. I thought the movie was great. Same. I Last think it's Jedi? one of... Yeah, I think it's yeah. one of the best Star Wars... Like, with the exception of uh, Empire, maybe Rogue One, so mm-hmm. floating uh, New pow- Hope. Floating powers that was great. Stuff. Yeah. No, I love the movie too, man. I mean, so. it, listen, you can, a lot of people can complain about that, but then you have Jar Jar Binks in three movies. So, wow. I mean... But I, I honestly do think that the movie's good. I just don't think that fan expectation of what happens to Luke Skywalker in that mm-hmm. film isn't what fan what fans wanted. And right. I think that was the more... The more Fan ficky side of that is is a Hendrix, and I that's where I kind of agree with you in some of this. See, I don't know. It kind of gets complicated too, though, because like I agree that fan expectations can ruin things sometimes, mm-hmm. especially when we have some of this like so nostalgic to people's childhoods and everything right, like that. Right, right, right. Because there's some things kind of like going back to Guardians of the Galaxy. Are we you talking about this at dinner, right? The the. Do oh. we? Maybe. I thought maybe you were on the opposite side yeah, of the table. But we right. like you can change Guardians of the Galaxy all day. As long as you have a team of misfits come together, you're good to go. They mm-hmm. look kind of like the book, you're good to go. But with Star Wars, everyone knows that mythos. Everyone has some kind of connection or history with it. So you have to appease like a lot of people right there. And the thing about it was, was that like when you look at that, they had the movies built upon. But this is the thing kind of like weirding me out. Going back to Kevin Feige, mm-hmm. Kevin Feige will go through the books and he takes all the pieces that worked in the movie. Star Wars had the extended universe. It feels like there was a lot of pieces there they could have like borrowed from, mm-hmm. but it feels like they chose not to do that. You would well, know better than me because again, well, you're on the Star Wars show. Well, they got rid of all the classic extended <laughs> universe stuff, so they were just yeah. the time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the whole point was them trying to make brand new stuff consistently. And you know, I'm not here to. I'm I'm so exhausted about arguing about this movie, so I don't want to talk about it any more <laughs> than that. But I will just say that like it's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that like um, I see what you're saying though, and it's like. The point is that, depending on what adaptation of a famous popular IP, I think there are lines of giving them what they want, surprising them how you give it to them, Mm -hmm. and making sure that, like, yeah, you still, like, surprise them with stuff that they weren't expecting. And that balance is really hard, you know? Yeah, Yeah. I I agree. I think that that's, uh, I agree completely. What do you have? You have a comment on any of this Star Wars talk? I feel like it's been beat to, to death it's for the last beat, year. So. Especially on, on Star Wars fanatics. If you guys want to talk about uh, how much you guys Yeah, I'm tired of talking about it, too. I'm not <laughs> yeah, I'm good, too. Because, I mean, I will say this. Because the thing about this is, like, well, two things. One, this story isn't done yet. So we have to wait till the third one I agree. Out. Yes. So we need to see how that turns out. Because that can yes. surely change a lot of things. That's what exactly will, Empire. Empire was, uh, yeah. when it came out, it was like that, too. But I will say this as well. Because the thing about this is, like, you look at what DC is doing. And DC is struggling with this for, like, the longest time. Mm-hmm. They try to take their IPs. And they start to... Tra- thing is they try to stay true to them but then they kind of like gear off the path a little bit and they try to introduce something new but it isn't always successful which makes their movies very polarizing yeah, yeah. i agree i agree I all agree. right let's talk can we uh move on to talk about our top five movies of 2018 yeah i'm down Do we, we all want to go with to number start? five all right number five. go with jezzer first i'll go no, second number five i'll say um uh, 
Searching with John Cho. Who? Searching with John Cho. Yeah. I like the movie a lot. I liked I liked how they how they shot it. Like it was just from all computer screens and phone screens, and the way that they uh, the way that they let you see the story is through like webcams and. Yeah, I think the impressive thing about that movie is the direction, but also that since you're an actor and you're trained not to look at a camera, and you're literally having to perform to look at a camera the whole time, I thought that movie from top to bottom, uh, like cinematography wise mm-hmm. and and innovative wise, I thought the movie was brilliant. I it's funny because that's my five too. That's your five. That's my five. Yeah. Um, you want to add what you just said? Like the best thing about that movie is it convinces you. It tries to swerve you into places that you think, are you going there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you that, really? that, that first twist? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was sitting there literally going like, are you really going there? My God. And it, they make you think it's going to go there. My and God. it's so, so well done. John Cho is amazing in the yes. film. Yes. Um, no, I, I. should be in more stuff. You also forget that it's John Cho and just not a dad looking for his daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But low key, though, the thing about it is, though, and I'll talk about what he gets wrong, but John Cho is a really great actor. Oh, yeah. He does a lot of stuff, but he just doesn't get appreciated enough, and it's kind of sad, but he's a damn good I actor. I want to see him in more roles like this. Yes. Yeah. Because, like, what was the name of the movie that he got was his breakout role? It was him. It was Han from um, Fast and Furious. He oh, came, uh, uh, Better, uh, Better, uh, Tomorrow. Better Tomorrow, yeah. Damn it. Like, there was so much talent that came out of that movie, mm-hmm. but people just kind of slept on him. But damn it, Bear Luck Tomorrow had a lot of great people in it. If you guys haven't seen and it. And Justin Lin directing it. Yeah, and he plays a dark character in there, too. Yeah, it's no. so good. No, John Ch- no, like, no. Every- basically, Bear Luck Tomorrow is filled with, like, future guys who would be great in other things. Exactly. You know? It's just like, it's like this is like, it's like the Avengers and like, we're going to go do solo books now. Yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I thought the movie was brilliant, and I, and I think that's a great choice. It made my top ten. Mm-hmm. I think it did. Um, What's your top five? My number five, Avengers Infinity War. Nice. Ooh. Nice. I know we're going with the, one of the big guns first here, but mm-hmm. for me, I think Avengers Infinity War, I, the thing that impresses me the most about this movie is the Russos directing it. Yeah. Because they have so many characters they have to juggle, and it all makes sense. Well, they do it so well with the rest of development. Yeah, so. but that's not a, that's not like 50 <laughs> characters you're yeah. having to do that with, right? <laughs> I, I mean, think, to be fair... A lot. Some of the characters were a little bit short changed. Sure. No, I agree. But that's why. But again, like, and I find that interesting about Last Jedi. I know we're bringing this back, but that, <laughs> but I think that it, a lot of people are like, oh, Infinity War was great, even though they know we're getting a second one. Even right. though that my, my, most people or some people didn't like the way it ended. I don't want to say most. Mm-hmm. Some people didn't like the way it ended with the Thanos snap. But I thought the movie was brilliant from top to bottom, and actually is one of the only comic book movies. Maybe with the exception of End of the Spider Verse, made me feel like I was paging through a comic, going sure. from scene to scene. No, I would totally piggyback and agree with you with that. Mm-hmm. Casting, but it was a, I would say it's a little bit bigger because it was just a comic book, but it was like a graphic novel. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you read a graphic novel, especially like a team book or an event book, as we call it in comics, you're literally going from one group of heroes to another group of heroes to another group of heroes, and you know it's going to all come together at some point. And the dope thing about it is though, bringing that comparison to Empires because what people need to remember is. It's not dumb because the heroes haven't come together yet. Sure. Yeah. The book, all books always end with all the heroes in this one big fight scene. And right now, everybody's split. Tony still needs to get back to Earth. And then, um, so well, you still need to have this going to see the end of the next movie. Here's the thing about that. What's so great about the finale, that last scene, and the, and the big famous snap, snap, is that I know, I know there's going to be other Spider-Man movies. Mm-hmm. I know there's going to be another Black Panther. Yeah, especially oh, especially yeah, yeah. Black Panther doing so well in February. Oh, yeah. You're not going to bring Black mm-hmm. Panther back. No, no, no. no. I know this. That's, see, that's, the, that's, I the, know that's this. where they made the mistake by having them, showing them disappear. Too. But no, this oh, is why really I was cool. No, here's the thing. This is why I was cool with it. Because it still made me go, oh, no. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, I, I, no, with, with the scene with Peter and Tony, I still went, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And I know he's fine. Yeah. I know he's fine. I read comics... I've read comics my entire life. And whenever a character dies uh-huh. in a big event, I'm like, oh, he'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'm like, I know they're going to be back. Yeah. But I, I got emotionally invested to buy it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm thinking back. I totally agree with you. Because oh. the thing about this is that for me, like watching that, again, like I know they're making a Black Panther too. But like when he comes up, it's like, we're going to not die here. Do- oh, no! To Chalada! <laughs> It would help. Like, literally, and what's dope is that, again, one of my favorite things is, like, I know Joe doesn't like <coughs> seeing movies with the general going movie public, mm-hmm. but I love that for special occasions, like, special movies like I this. I did, though. Oh, well, I saw this at the premiere. Oh, okay. Uh, of course I would. But then me and Nagami <laughs> went to go see it at a regular screening. Remember? We went to, like, like midnight or something, oh, like, nice. a regular screening. And I remember I saw this at, like, an AMC on a Thursday at, like, 7 o'clock with my friends and whatnot, and literally, I remember when Black Panther disappeared. You just saw this right one was like, <gasps> 
like just literally heard of just oh, huge yeah. gas, and then like you heard, and I heard teenage girls like oh, when like Peter was dying mm-hmm, or something like mm-hmm. that. And I say like honestly, it was super dope. Like the only thing I can compare it to, like for me personally, was like the '90s when Superman died, and I was just getting mm-hmm. the comics. I understand people were coming back, mm-hmm. and then, I, again, I assume like oh, Superman will come back, but it was just one of those moments like oh man, these people they left. I think yeah. that's because it's the brilliance of the of the storytelling that Marvel does, where it makes you invest in every single character. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Okay, so who's Four? your turn? Or you your, have a, who's your five? Yeah, you're five, Johnny. Your five? I said searching, so it's already. Oh, uh, okay. Already been covered. Uh, <laughs> right. You guys are gonna get mad at me. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mine's a tie. Oh, what? Right, that's fine. What you got? Okay, so let me explain why though. So first off, here's the thing. I'm a big horror comedy fan, and yeah. my honest to god opinion is like comedy is one of the hardest genres that look right because it's so hard to listen to laughter from people. It's the reason why. I but Get Out came out two, like two years ago. Which one? Get Out yeah. came out like two years ago, right? I'm not the Oh, okay. Sorry. Anyway. A year ago. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> anyway. But um, and the thing about it is, though, is that, like, so comedy is, like, that's the reason I give a lot of shrimp to Judd Apatow. It mm-hmm. was my favorite movies of all time. It's, like, Funny People. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it's so brilliant and nuanced and whatnot. And so the thing about it is, though, that's, that's actually like, a pretty good movie. It's an amazing movie, movie yeah. yeah. But it, it's, it's a sleeper, though. People don't really appreciate it. So the thing was, though, as I did my top five list, there were something I had to do. Like, as I look at this list, I, like, I cannot have a list that doesn't have a comedy on here. Mm-hmm. And I cannot have a list that doesn't have, like, a woman in, like, this, like, the lead role and everything like that. And I have to give respect to those two. So for my number five, again, sadly enough, it wasn't year for comedies. Like, yeah. so, so my number five pick is Deadpool 2. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was the funniest movie I saw this year. I was dying laughing. It was a good time. I love the, the whole X Force scene. You're building up to this, like, oh, X Force going to fight, and then no spoiler, they all just like start dying off the plane and everything like that <laughs> in hilarious different ways. So I'm That's like, good. I'm just dying there. So like, for me, Deadpool two, and I'm I'm hoping going to 2019, we get more comedies because we need to make it. People there's some, need to laugh. There's some pretty good comedies this year though. Mm. We had tag and you game and I like tag and seems like game, <laughs> game night was, game night was great. Game night was. I actually funny. been meaning to see that one. Game we'll night's talk. really good. We'll talk. And then it's um, really well written. And then for and then my another for, again that's why I say it's a tie. Yo, Crazy Rich Asians. Yo, I gotta I give a lot of respect it. to Constance Wu and all the stuff they Maybe did, either. everything like that. Because this thing that was a societal game changer. Yeah. And again, that's why I was going back to um John like John Better like such a good actor yeah. like that. It's like again it just kind of like yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. The racist. reason why... No, no. I set you up for that, no, Johnny. you really did, you bastard. But no, the reason why is because like it's dope to see Asian Americans and prominent lead roles in films, and a movie film which is about them and their culture and whatnot, and which is so eye-opening. And Constance Wu, an amazing actress in that film, and she's been like... Um, you love chick- Constance She's great. He just, he, he he her as Psylocke. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 and, and Constance too. has been like championing this film and like, like writing articles about everything like that, so... I give a lot of respect to that. I mean, the cool thing about this is because we got that movie this year, but we also got the one on Netflix, like, what was it, To the Boys I Used to Love? To all the boys I love, yeah. To all the boys I love and whatnot. So we're starting to see, like, this movie get traction and help out bring get other Asian American people working and everything like that. So props. Question. I have a question for you, Johnny. Sorry. Okay. All right, Justin. Um, okay, first, because I... Wait, hold on. Let me ask you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. Go, go, go. Um, my question is, did you put Deadpool on there only because it's a comedy, though? Yeah. Because right. I, yeah, I need a comedy. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's, right. that's all thing. I wanted to know. Yeah, because I, here's the thing. Did I enjoy the movie? Yeah, it was dope. It was fun. Did a lot of cool things. But again, me being a fan of comedy, a comedy needs to be on my list. Just like a horror film needs to be on my I list. I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. And mm-hmm. the thing, we just didn't have enough this year. So for me, it tracked a little bit lower for me, mainly because I like... It, for me, like I feel like a lot of the movies I picked have rewatchability. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I can... like, I saw... <laughs> I even saw the different Deadpool, the what, Once Upon a Deadpool, and I was like, oh, man, it's the same movie. And it's like, is it, literally, is it literally the same movie? With the exception of the Fred Savage stuff, yeah. Oh, wait, so it's literally the same movie? Yeah. It's the same I was, movie. No way, really? Just yeah. for kids. Or just oh, for I was about to go see it. I'm happy yeah. I did it. Yeah. But I did like the movie when it came out, and I thought it was well done. Mm-hmm. It's just like, for, for some odd reason, the Deadpool franchise to me, I can only watch them once. And then I'm like, all right, that's, that's fair. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I feel like, for me, for me. I feel like, I mean, the thing about comedies are, though, because that's really say the, the hardest genre to watch, is because low, t- low key, when you know the joke is coming, it's not always going to be funny. You literally, some comedies, you have to wait like five to six years. Because, for example, um, Hangover. It, no, well, Hangover is a great example of that, but I was going to use, um, crap, what's the name of it? When they place the frat and everything like that. What? Will Ferrell and they start oh, for uh, old school, old, old school. school. Thank you. Think about this, I love old school, but think about this, I love it so much that I can't we watch it because I, I know all the jokes. But right. he gets shot in the neck and falls in the pool, yeah. and then Sean asks is like giving him mouth to mouth all these different things. So yeah, <clears throat> to kind of jump on your crazy rich Asians thing, it's in like number six for me. It's very close. Mm-hmm. I love that movie too, and it's probably got one of my favorite scenes in any movie this year, mm-hmm. which is the mahjong scene at the end oh. of the film with the, and I think that's both one of the best acted scenes. And one of the best directed scenes of the whole year. Oh wow! I think it's a really, just a, it just builds beautifully, and I you know it's like it's it's rare for me to say I don't say that very much about oh that scene's one of the best scenes. I just 
usually take the whole package. But I remember walking out of that movie and just thinking about that scene mm -hmm. and what that scene represents and what that scene does. And <laughs> great work from Constance and Michelle Yeoh and John M. Chu just directed that just right to feel what I needed to feel. So I'm I really love that scene. you threw that M in there because I was going to get really yeah. confused for a second. Okay, <laughs> though. I will say this too, though. Like, we'll do this when we do this, our box office showdown and talk about Oscars. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that we just got the nomination for the Golden Globes, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't see, really see this there that much. Yeah, that surprised me yeah, too, actually. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of movies I thought got overlooked because another one's Blind Spotting, which, which I really liked, but... Um, I still need to see that. Oh, it's good. I heard it's good. It's on Blu-ray already, right? It's yeah. good. I mean, there's a lot of movies that I've, I that I thought would be there. They just mm -hmm. weren't. I was like, whoa. This <coughs> anyway, Johnny, let's go with your number five. I'm sorry, four. Four? Okay. And we'll Our snake four, it. I know where this is for you. <laughs> Halloween. So, 2018? Yeah, because you think I love... Halloween for me? I know where it is. Because you think I love horror okay. films. And right. Halloween did such a great job, like, re like reestablishing the story, paying homage to the old, why introducing like, these aspects of it. Again, another movie with a prominent female lead, but then there's a two prominent female leads. But then there's a Michael Myers character was was like, so well acted and everything like that. You might be like, wait, how's that well acted? It was like the guy's just, like, presence was so good. And, like, some of the directorial choices, like the long shot they did when oh, he's yeah. in the neighborhood just walking, just, like, killing people at random. And I remember that scene where he's like walking in, kills a woman, going through, going to kill someone else. He walks by a baby, and you heard the whole audience guy like, oh, he's going to kill that baby? Oh, and then yeah, he like yeah, just yeah. keeps walking goes into the next house and everything like that. And again, and then again the, the violence of it, without being too like brutal like a hostel or anything like that, where he like kills the mechanic and you just see the aftermath, you know he's just like, oh, oh shit, man, he went, he's not he to be messed with. Guy. Yeah, so again, for me, I give a lot of credit. That's and the dope said. thing about it is though, it was a horror film that included like some comedic elements as well. Like I love that little kid where it's like, oh no, I'm getting out of here. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there and everything like that. You're laughing with the old, this and that, the girl gets Dave, all you that. go first. Oh, that kid was great. That <laughs> kid was amazing. Dave, you go first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get up there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and so again, great movie. I'm happy for it. And again, I love movies that kind of elevate the genre. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that elevated genre. I felt that movie did what Rob Zombie was trying to do with his two films. <laughs> Sorry, I have memories of yeah, Rob Zombie. I understand. I understand. All right, Justin, wait, wait. Let's comment on Halloween. I mean, I feel it's fair that we. Yeah. You guys say anything? Sir? I really loved that movie too. I thought that was really great. Um, it's kind of like it's weird. I can say that this and Mary Poppins Returns share something in common. Mm -hmm. Is that it's a sequel. That's essentially remaking the first movie. Yeah. Mm. Um, but. I think what I they agree. do, <laughs> I think what they did to Judy Greer's character was smart, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I really liked the small reveals about her until we get to the end. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. really nicely done. Oh, dude, I yeah. love the ending. Like, I mean, spoilers if you haven't seen it, but just go see it. It's amazing movie. But I love that whole scene. It was like, oh my god, mom, I can't take the shot, and then he appears there. Got gotcha, the bitch. Fuck Bam! It. Was like, oh, so gangster, so, so good. gangster, my Riley voice, so, so gangster, good. so good. So good. For me, I, I think that I agree. I mean, I don't disagree with that being on anybody's top five. I think it's a great story about PTSD. Yeah. I think I fall along the lines that you do, Justin, where it does feel like a remake of an old movie. Mm -hmm. However, it's executed very well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They tell a very good story. I like the fact. I don't think one of the downsides of it to me, because I thought they were going to build up those podcasters more. Same. Because it's such yeah. a, like, crime oh podcast was such a big deal. Mm -hmm. But it's it's almost kind of like they wasted the characters. Other than that. It's like Brian Cranston and Godzilla. Right. Other oh. than that, though, other than that, I thought the movie was pretty well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, from I, top to bottom. I will mm -hmm. say, though, the reason why I said I know where this is going to be for Joe's, because as you guys know, Joe doesn't go see movies with a general movie That's going audience. That was and, a, um, oh that was a, go, God. That was a one and oh. Hey, we man, did. motherfucker, I was sitting next to your dumb ass <laughs> as you were on your phone half the time he contemplating so angry. whether or not to look up an IMDB credit for something. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You were on your phone in the theater? Yep. I'm yep. never watching a movie with you. <laughs> no, 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 no. We go see the film and literally we're sitting at this packed house or whatever. It's a hashtag outing. As we're watching the film, one, Jezzer's on his phone. Two, I won't call out this hashtag member but she's talking throughout the whole thing to another hashtag member. And then we got Jennifer. Uh, oh, I wasn't sitting next to them. Oh, yeah, that. but they were they were behind me and I heard the whole conversation. And then we just had people in the audience like talking all the time. Then people were like, yo, shut up. And it was, oh my gosh. So I can understand. It was the worst. So when we came out, this dude was furious about it. He was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> Never. God damn it. Any comments on Halloween? You you saw half of it. Is the other half you're on your phone? <laughs> I was trying to figure out where that girl was from because she looked so familiar. You can wait she was in the movie. movie. She was That's in Runaways. The babysitter was in Runaways, by the way. Uh, yeah. I thought I knew her like personally. I was like, is that someone I know? And I no, just kept trying to look at I interview. But and, and the worst part was, just fucking do it if you're going to do it. He like, ah, maybe I should. Ah, fuck. It's like 45 <laughs> minutes of this went on. 
He didn't even turn his brightness down. You know the guy. He was sitting next to me. All of a sudden, it was like, Drew, like the Ark of the Covenant had opened up. It's like, oh my God, what's going on back there? Because Safari is open. Oh my God. Have some goddamn etiquette, Jesse. All right, Justin, let's get your number four in. Um, It's a Netflix exclusive movie called The Night Comes First. I thought you were going to say Roma. I haven't seen I haven't seen it either. I haven't seen it. The Night Comes First is from the people who made The Raid. Oh, okay. And. It is one of the best action movies I've seen this year, if not the best action movie I've seen this year. The best. Um, it's like crazy violent, like like slasher movie violent. It's insane, and it's got probably one of my favorite endings to really? a movie. Yeah, it's, it's on Netflix. Awesome. I gotta check it out. Yeah, now. yeah. It out. no, the, it's it super. If you love the raid, uh, one and two, this is a must see. Is that the guy from <clears throat> Tekken? No. <laughs> I thought and, the other guy was Toku. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, got know, some... yeah, it does look like Toku Kid. That guy in like the right. <laughs> yeah, it it's, the, like Toku it's kid. the lead guy from Raid, uh, from yeah. the Raid movies, and uh, it's not the same director, um, but another really good director. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, just awesome fight scenes, brutal fight scenes, and like really cool like. A really cool like crime story that's like that. like got that like I got a weird like soft spot for like Asian melodrama, so it just like nails all that like high drama stuff in there. It's like no, it's a must see. Yeah. So to now it. we got to watch it. And we got to I got to mm-hmm. report it back because uh, now I, now I, you sold me. I want to see it. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, my number four. None of us can really comment because I don't think any of us. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah, we gotta move on. Yeah. Uh, my number four is, and I know this you might be thinking, oh, this is gonna rank it a little low. Actually, I thought it was a great movie, but it's just so many great other great movies I saw this year. It was Black Panther. Um, nice. I I like Black Panther a lot. I thought it was a brilliant film. I thought the acting was great. I honestly want Michael B. Jordan get nominated for an Oscar so bad for this movie specifically. Uh, I thought honestly, and if Ryan Coogler doesn't get nominated, it's a, it's a it's a travesty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's a it's this is probably. One of the best superhero movies. I would say the best, but it's one of the best mainly because there's another movie that came out this year. Yeah. I was like, all right, that's great. Uh, but this is one of the best. This is probably one of the best live action superhero movies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, acted brilliantly. Uh, I also like the fact that, you know, I think Martin Freeman did a great job. I think Andy Circus did a great job. The supporting cast and the women in this movie oh. alone Oh, to me, yeah. were even stronger than the leads. Angela so Bassett. Angela Bassett. I mean, you got Denai Denai Guerrero. What's up? Amazing. Auntie? They were they were amazing. So mm-hmm. obviously, Black Panther for me, a solid number four. It should be a little higher, but like I said, we had so many good movies come out this year. It was my number four until I realized. I, here, I feel like I felt like someone's gonna mention it. Sure. And I wanted to talk about a movie that I feel like it was gonna get forgotten in the shuffle. And I remembered how much I loved. The night comes for us. Mm-hmm. But I'm pointing out, that was on my number four up until my decision last minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so your five and four were possibly not. Yeah, yeah. I love this movie, though. It's great. And I think what they did with Killmonger. Amazing. One of the smartest things I've ever seen in a superhero movie. Great. I, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that perspective being included in this movie. And it's a, uh, it blew me away. For sure. Mm. Who else? Who else? Who else? Yeah, Anything on Black Panther? Good movie. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool story, bro. Cool story. I'm going to wait because it's on my list later. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Right on. Uh, is it my number four? Yeah, yeah. it's your number four. It's uh, Infinity War. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Which we've covered already. Yeah. Kind of covered. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I would All say right. the one thing that we didn't talk about, like, with Infinity War is the fact that it was such a superhero achievement because this is the first time you've had so many heroes and mm-hmm. they've done a story like this come together like this. Like, again, like, again, you had 17 movies leading up to this point. Yeah. And even though, like, people... It was crazy because people knew what to do. It was like people had read the comics. Yeah. yeah. People were just so invested in it. It was super dope. Hell, hell, like regular big comic book crossover events now they're in publication aren't as good as this movie. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to go on your number three. Number three, I'm going to say... Go faster, though. Mission Impossible Fallout. Oh, it's nice. A great movie. Yes, because it's just a great action movie. It's it's one of those movies that are just fun. And I'm like I'm still in awe of like, Henry Cavill's mustache. That, oh. I'm in Tom awe. Tom Cruise, just Tom Cruise in general. Mm. Like he learned how to freaking fly a helicopter for this movie. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, no, I agree. I think this is probably one of the best Mission Impossible. Yes, movies. yeah, yeah. if not the best. Yep. Yeah, agreed. Um, any. Mission Impossible. All right. I didn't see it, Sally. All right, I'm going to move on to my number three, and that is, and I forgot what it was. Oh, A Quiet Place. Ooh, oh, it's a great movie. Um, oh. I, love that movie. I, I think A Quiet Place for me is the best horror movie of the year, and I think it does something cinematically, which I had never experienced before. It's essentially telling a silent movie in the modern era to the point where my audience 
and I don't like going to those loud audiences. Really we went to a press audience, and we were afraid to eat or make a noise because we thought it was going to affect the people on screen. <laughs> I thought it was I think, yeah, brilliant. I think that there was a lot of people that were like that. Brilliant yeah. movie. Nice. Um, I'm going to go out of order a little bit because... Wait, we didn't get to his number three. Well, no, uh, but the reason why is uh, because my number three is also The Quiet Place. All right. All right, nice. Because nice. honestly, again, as a horror fan, I love the genre of building the suspense and everything like that. It was so smartly well done. The thing about it is, though, is that you didn't need to explain where the monster's from. Just newspaper clippings and things like that got the story across. You had this great... It was also the underlying story as well because a lot of times people think with horror is like, it's just jump scares, but it's not about that. You can actually tell like a story of a father-daughter strange relationship and the guilt she felt for like losing her brother and everything like that. I also love the mechanics of the world, how they thought about how this world works and everything. Mm -hmm. So when they get ready for the pregnancy and like how they're building the basement and everything like that, it was just very smart and very well done. And then the sacrifice of the dad, when the dad, spoilers, when the dad like passed away and sacrificed himself, you feel that, but then you also feel for them at the end where they figure out like, okay, we know how to kill these things now. And now there's hope for this. And again, talk about the mechanics of the world. I love the lanterns at night. How about how they light a light, the other people light a light so you know over there. Different color ones for like the status. Exactly. So it was just again really smart walking on the stand. And again, the fact that you had Emily Blunt, her husband putting this together, yo, I give a lot of credit to them. It's dope. Question for you, though, is you, you're talking about the, the world. I personally, I know that they're making a prequel to this, and I don't, I honestly don't think we need it. No. What are your thoughts? We don't need it, right? I will say one, here's the thing. Well, one thing is that one, I don't think we need it because, again, this was just so well done. A sequel, maybe. So sure. you can show how they eradicate sure. these things and so, so we can keep that story. But we know how this is probably going to start because there's no real new ground to cover. Mm-hmm. Two, I will say this is one of those films because for a long time we talked about um, Cloverfield. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's those movies they slap Cloverfield on top of, but it doesn't work when they did the Cloverfield Paradox. Right. But this is a movie you could put Cloverfield on. It's like, oh shit, this works. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the Cloverfield, <laughs> home away or something like that. I mean, I guess I we could do that. that. That's <laughs> hilarious. Is that from Sicario? It's totally from Sicario. That's hilarious. This, this uh, movie reminds me of Signs a little bit. I don't know why. A little bit, like yeah. farm and alien, the weird whatever. Just what you got. I love that movie, by the way. That's a great movie. Um, that's probably gonna get higher on my list the more I think about it. Um, uh, but my number three. Er, hold on, what did I write? Oh, sorry to bother you. Oh, yeah. oh um, I seen it. That was a good one. I really yeah. think I think for me that it's uh the best thing I can say about the movie is just see it. Yeah. And I can't guarantee y'all are gonna like it, but I think you should just see it. There's a lot and of clips from it. It does some incredible stuff in there that I for a first time director, Boots Riley just blew me away. Mm. And um lead actor, I can never pronounce his name. I, it sucks because I love from, him. Uh, get out. Yeah, I love that actor. Yeah, and from Atlanta. And Atlanta, and uh, heck, he was even good in that awful Death Note movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's phenomenal in this movie. Tessa Thompson's great in this movie. Steven Yoon's great in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, you're not ready for what this movie does, is all I could say. And yeah, even if you hate it, it's like, yeah, but watch it. I Try, will, give it a go. And I will tell people, you need to appreciate this movie and this actor while we have him, because he's low-key out, like... I will compare him to the Andre 3000 of acting. I thought you said, why we have him? Are you planning on murdering him? <laughs> you no, know, the reason why is because, you know, I'm, cause he's a true artist. Like, yeah. I've seen him do interviews and other things like that. He's a true eclectic. Like, sometimes he just likes walking around barefoot and things We're like talking that. talking like a Donald Glover? Well, no, worse than that. Because the reason why, this is why I say Andre 3000. Because Andre 3000, people have wanted him to put out another album for years, but he's such an artist, he's like, oh, the vibe's not right, I don't feel it. And so this guy at any time, once he makes his money, he'll be like, oh, I'm going to take a break. So you got to kind of appreciate those type of souls who bring such creativity and such uniqueness to the world while you have them, because at some point in time, they can go into other things just like take a break. Yeah. Donald Glover's a workhorse. Like, we're going to see him like all the time. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, uh, Johnny, give us your number two. Okay, so game my number three, so number two. My number two is, we covered it, is Spider Man to the Spider Mm. Honestly, I think he's going to win Best Animated uh, Picture at the Oscars. Hands down. Hey, Johnny, that's my number two. Who y'all can shot, man? <laughs> it is. Me and- too. Nice, dope. And um, again, like I thought it was amazing. Like the, the here's the thing. So one, um, I'll start with something that some people may not talk about. The soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Oh, soundtrack good. I'm so still listening fire. to the soundtrack. Right so now. am I. So am I. So I was, I was look, listening to it. Look at my wallpaper. <laughs> nice, nice. And like I was trying to get the Jordans that I wanted them so bad. I got. Yeah, I know you did because you went to the press screen and got them. I'm so jealous. But the thing about it is, though, is that, like, it's such a dope film, and I love the messaging of it. The music, going by the soundtrack, like, the soundtrack, again, is, like, so fire with such a diverse collection of people, and it's all this positive music talking about, like, again, being yourself, and it's all this, like, uplifting hip-hop. It's so dope. Yeah. And then I love the message of the movie as well. Like, I love that ending scene where it's, like, anybody can be Spider-Man. And then it ends with him laying on the bed, and you got this black and brown kid, and it's, like, you can be Spider-Man, too. It's such a powerful, uplifting message, but it's just so subtly done, and it's not in your face where you feel more people accept it yeah. why do you let's hear we're all gonna gush we're all gonna get a turn so listen i'll say it's my number one so screw it it's, yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite movie of the year um and i think my biggest thing about it is that the movie is so impressively 
The script is impressive because you found a way to wonder, what did I just watch? It does all that and it gives everybody a motivation and it gives everyone like this huge, great emotional beats. My biggest thing is like, I love Miles Morales as a character in the comics. So I was a little worried about a movie where it's like, he's sharing the screen with four other characters. But the movie's so beautifully centered on Miles mm -hmm. that it still feels like a good Miles movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the I've been it's a clip it's the clip online it's that's like the shortened version of the his first swing. Mm -hmm. I've been rewatching that oh, yeah. on so repeat. Cool, yeah. so good. On so repeat good. since that movie came so since so I saw symbolic, it with the glass breaking everything oh. else, representing so many different things. And the the, the song the what up danger song using mm -hmm. it it's. And I love Aunt May in this too. I oh. think Lily Tomlin's great. Ooh, great. Like that shot of her waiting for him going like, took you long enough? I love that. It great, just everyone's great. I will say this before we go to everybody else because you talked about Miles. Mm -hmm. A low key feels like the best Peter movie as well. Yeah. Because he matters as much as like Spider Man Homecoming. Like that 616, I was like, that's my Spider Man. Mm -hmm. That's the Spider Man I read in the 90s or who I read now, who's like down your luck park and everything like that. That was the 616 Spider Man who I was like, this is one of the best executed Peter Parkers I've seen on screen. Yeah. Joe? Uh, so you're, you went with cultural impact and uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. I thought that was also the, one of the best messages of any movie I've seen this year. I agree. Uh, you went with, and also the music, by the mm -hmm. way. Oh, yeah. Fucking phenomenal. Uh, you went with the characters and the... Uh, structure. The what? Structure. 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 Yeah. You've been choosing the multiverse. 100% agree with you. 100%. For me, uh, I agree with all that, plus the animation. Oh, so yeah. the yeah. one thing that I, mm. I have to really, really kind of like give this movie, oh my God. You would think that after a Pixar movie, like, where's animation going to go? And you see a movie like this, it's very rare that you can sit in a theater and think to yourself, well, this is something new. Yeah. This is something different. And I actually didn't think I was ever going to see that in animation because I always felt, well, we're going to keep progressing. We're going to keep progressing. Maybe we'll get 3D animated movies. But this takes it back to the old school, but mixes in with its own complete style mm -hmm. and made me feel like I was living in a comic book. Yes. And I was yeah. shocked how well it did yeah. that. Um, and, and I also agree with everything you guys are saying, so I'm just adding on to it. And I just want to add on to your point. I totally agree with you because the thing about this is that for a long time we've been trapped in like this Pixar bubble yeah. where Pixar is yes. leading the way on animation. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of like a slap in the face, like the gong the throne of Pixar. I was like, yeah. no, we can do this and we can take that next level because I agree with you. It felt like the animation here felt like a comic book, but it also felt like hip hop. Yeah, it, it felt was like it that felt graffiti like, art style, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. You felt that in like every single thing, like in this scene right here, you felt in all the single things they were doing and it felt like Miles. Like it was really cool the cultural things he put through this movie, but doing it in a way that again was in people's face that might make them like averse to it. I want to add to that too because like, uh, I remember when the teaser came out last year mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I remember hearing about an animated Spider-Man movie. Sure, I guess. And like Lord and Miller are involved. That should be probably be pretty sure. good. And then that first teaser came out. And I was like jaw to the ground. I went, I'm sorry, that's the movie? Mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't nearly ready to see, like that shot of, which is my my uh, wallpaper now, that. of just miles upside down, the city. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's one of the best comic book movie shots. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best superhero movie shots I've ever seen, ever. And how? who'd have thought, I don't, and you're going to be next, but who'd have thought you're going to put Spider-Ham in a movie and it's going to work? Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah, it does. <laughs> no, I agree with you. Then going to Justice Point, <coughs> dude, you did the multiverse in such a clean way. Yeah. Where well, you had Spider going on screen. A character was created like what, like four or five years ago? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like and it worked so well and now she's about to get a, a spin off movie with the other female spider characters and everything like that. And another really good performance from Haley Sanfeld. Exactly. It's a good month for Haley Sanfeld. Yeah, it really is. And so it's so uh, again, it's so dope. And that's just such a beautiful shot. Again, I love the Jordans because you know I'm Johnny Cool Kicks. But it's also <laughs> just that again, shoes are a big part of like especially Jordans of African American culture, so you just did all these things and we're able to bring it all together. It's just so well done. It's like it reminds me of the um, Logic song and mm -hmm. Black Spider Man, and yeah. it kind of pays homage to like Donald Glover was like Donald for Spider Man, and everything like that. Oh. So dope. I'm sorry to talk so much, Jazz, my bad. <laughs> what you got? I like the heart. In yeah, this movie. there's just so much like you really connected with with Miles, mainly Nicholas Cage, right? Yeah, you really yeah. connected with Miles, and <laughs> you really felt like that scene with. His dad behind the door, just like, oh, so going, going to talk oh. to him about like you know his uncle, and, like him trying to not having to live up to their expectations because they still love him. Like just the heart in the film, like for them to jam pack all that into one movie, it's it's amazing. Yeah, and do it su successfully. Yeah, it's amazing. Like it's just yeah, like it really it's really like you know. Like with Pixar, that it's exactly it's like saying, "Oh, Pixar, we can do what you're we can do what yeah. you're doing." There's no reason why this shouldn't make more than Aquaman, 
Bumblebee yeah. and Mary Poppins. Yeah. It's a great I wouldn't, movie. I wouldn't be shocked. No. Hey, wait. So here's, this is the weird thing I will say, though. Mm-hmm. When I went to go see the very first screening of it, um, well, well I, went, I saw it twice. I saw it once with press screen, then I took my students to go see it. Mm-hmm. And my students loved it. They had a great time. Um, but I, I hope it does well, because I am too. a little bit worried about it, though. Because, again, it doesn't seem like it's selling out house, hey, but I hope it does well. Me, what's, your tra- what, what's it What's it at, uh, box office wise? 52. 52. And that's oh. just, this is the second week. It's yeah, doing what, good. What was it at last week? I don't know if that's... Mm-hmm. What was it at last week? It's going to do well. It'll make its money back. You see, again, going back to our original conversation like about Bumblebee, it's this weird time of the year to be putting out some of these hits. Like, again, I wish this had come out at another time What's of year. What's wrong with you? 25. I, I just got really depressed right now because it seems like they're going to green light. It just seems like the Venom movie is going to make more money than this. And I don't know <laughs> why. Yeah, but that was the thing we talked about. Was like, cause we were all, I remember when Venom dropped. And we'll get back to the topic, but we were all like, why is this doing well? It's such a trash movie, but it came out during a dead time. Yeah. And because of that, yeah, yeah you're right. Of you're 100% about, right. And the thing about Izzo's Venom is a popular character because he's low key the main enemy to Spider Man. So the thing about Izzo, so people want to go see it and people are geek for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> all right. Uh, Jezzer, what's your number two? Number two? Sorry. I, it was uh, Spider Man. What's your number one? Number one is... We're on number ones now, right, everybody? Mm-hmm. I haven't done my number two yet. Number oh, what's your number two, Justin? I'll number make it real quick. Um, it's a weird one. It's Nicolas Cage in Mandy. Oh, oh nice, nice. Yeah, You're getting, get the that. fuck out of here. You that. chose a Nicolas Cage movie? I, I fucking, it was really good. fucking love this really movie. Good. I need to see it. The Breeze! The Breeze! <laughs> no, here's the thing. My face. Mandy oh. is one of the most visually stunning movies I've nah, seen I, the whole year. I haven't seen it. What, what, what is it? Did it come out in wide release? It, it got like like a wide enough theatrical like indie release. Yeah, it's fine. But like the movie is one of the best looking movies seen the whole year. Really? And it took, it is what I tell people. It's like, it takes that what the hell performance of Nick Cage, mm-hmm. finds a moment in the movie that actually justifies it and then he goes off the Nick Cage rail nice. and it makes sense. Well listen, I'm a David Lynch fan so I feel like this is going to be right in my alley. No, no, <laughs> and you know, it, it, it is it is messed up, it is weird and I do remember like when I walked out of the theater my eyes were hurting. Really? I'm like, what reality am I in right now? And it was just you know, it, it blew me away. I bought it on DVD. I love it. It's great. I gotta check this out. And I gotta be real to piggyback off that because I, I want to see it because I keep hearing uh, Mandy. They scrub, Mandy. I keep hearing they, good things about out. it. But people kind of sleep on Nicolas Cage because here's the thing: like I always tell people that <coughs> at the end of the day, like you can't like badmouth Nicolas Cage. He is a good actor. He's done some great roles. And granted, he made some bad choices. But two things I always go back to that make make, sure, make my respect for him solidify. One is Matchstick Man. I think it's oh, in Las Vegas. Oh, no, no. Matchstick Man, which is just an amazing, like, low-budget film. Yeah, and then yeah. two was an adaptation. Ooh, Again, adaptation. It, like, when I saw both those films, I was like, nah, this motherfucker's an actor. For me, my favorite Nick Cage film, Wild at Heart. Mm. Ooh, I love that good one. Movie. Yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Good. And even for fun, like, I mean, here's the thing. It's a popcorn film, and I put it in that vein of, like, Fast and Furious type movies or Michael Bay movies, but, dude, Con Air. Yeah, I, oh, yeah that's a fun, fun movie. I do man. like Con Air. It's fun. I'm a, I'm very partial to Face Off. I one face time Face Off, yes. Face Off, yeah. I'm gonna take my face off. <laughs> uh, go ahead. What's your number one, Jezzer? Well, you guys know my favorite movies are like the Fast and Furious. Oh, movies. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we we were talking about this in the beginning. I I really enjoyed Bumblebee. Nice. Right, really? Good, good choice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Bumble, like just. I'm happy that it made somebody's top five. Yeah, because yeah. it's nice. you know it's just the nostalgia factor and. It hit all the points like you wanted. Like that's exactly what it's expecting for. Who's ready for some Bumblebee fan theory? Uh, Sa- this is Daniel Nagami's Bumblebee <laughs> fan theory. You ready? Okay. This is why I told John saying he loved it and Travis Knight. And Travis Knight said this exactly. I can't okay. confirm or deny it. Okay. So not only is this a soft reboot to Transformers, but also it's a soft reboot to GI Joe. And what if, what if John Cena is actually playing Duke? Duke being the code oh name. my god. Oh yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, Travis Knight said that he didn't. He couldn't confirm nor deny that. Oh no, so, I thought he's the same thing. Watch it. He's like, just like oh, Cena well, would like, make. I think it's gonna happen. Amazing dude. Cena would make a great dude. Would. Better than Chatham. Chatham. Hell Chatham. yeah. Yeah. I, I like Cena's Chatham cool. now, but I think he'd be like, an amazing dude. A lot dude. of people Channing think Martin. Cena's like <laughs> just like a comedic. I think he, he. I think he could be a star, like Ooh. a real star. Cena. Cena's rising up there. I wish Cena was Shazam. Who? Yeah, I, me like, too. I'm 100 yeah. percent with I that. I think it, it would have worked. It would have been. Hey, no, sorry no. for you because I know your boy, yeah. you and Zach yeah, no, are but, boys. No, but, but when when they were like trying to look, for, I think it would have worked because he he has that comedic. He is super yeah. funny. He's charming as shit yeah. too. Well, you can't see him. No. <laughs> I, I think John Cena is great. Here's the thing: I respect all your opinions, mm-hmm. and I am a John Cena fan. Like I think mm-hmm. John Cena can like do certain things or not. But I will be honest though: when I was watching this film, there was comedic beats that I was looking for to be hit, and the thing was, he tried to hit them, but mm-hmm. it just wasn't as strong for me. But they're literally it, called Decepticons. 
That's my favorite. That's funny. Honestly, no, I go back to that and I'm just like, had that been anybody else, I kind of feel that would have got a bigger pop. Because again, I saw the general audience and it was quiet. But that's just me though. So that's the reason why, like, mm-hmm. again, but when you said Duke, I can see him playing Duke because Duke is the straight lace guy of like Joe. Oh, yeah. He's not Flint. He's not any other guys who are supposed to be cool. He's not Snake Eyes. He's the straight lace guy. And I feel that's exactly who he can play. If, I hope the, he's Duke. if that Snake Eyes movie does end up happening, Oh, it's and gonna, Cena and we reported on that this week. I, that's true. That's right. And oh yeah, with like the exclusive like mm-hmm. characters. Yeah, yeah. And Cena shows up at the end of that movie to recruit him. I'll be down. <laughs> How cool would that be, dude? You just style. wrote the movie. That's dope. Uh, all right. So that was your number one. Good number one, by the way. Uh, for me, I'm going more traditional in terms of Oscar bait movie, and I really liked it a lot. I know it's. Uh, I like the Green Book. Um, really? I, I thought the movie was brilliant. Wow. I, I think that both M- Mashallah Ali and uh, Mahershala Ali mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, Viggo Mortensen both deserve Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor. Mm-hmm. I think the movie tells a great story. And, and yes, race is a huge part of it, but the friendship part of it to me was, was more... Uh, it, it, it was done brilliantly. No, it's right. like it's low key though. The dope. Like, I I haven't seen the movie. I plan to go see it because I went <laughs> back to the, uh, Detroit with my family. This be like the movie we'll probably go see. Oh, nice. But the thing I like about this movie though, and I crack jokes about how it's reverse driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> 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 but the thing about this though is that like it is, and it's like we can make this movie at this time period and get away with it. But they also re- reference things that are pretty present, like sexuality. No, no, I agree. That's the thing. Though. That's the dope thing about this movie is that it's doing like we could have made this movie back during the nineties. It would have been as well received, or people mm-hmm. would have their minds open to it now. But people were willing to accept the driving Miss Daisy but now we're in the world where we can do this film and that's what makes me so happy for I him. also think that maybe I just didn't realize how good of an actor Viggo Mortensen is man that guy's really? A, yeah mm-hmm. really? Bro. isn't he also the prowler Marcellus yes, yes. Mar- Marshall Ali he is, is the prowler yeah, and he was so great good. and so he's so also good. gonna be in True Detective season 3 Woo! But, uh, anyway but honestly <laughs> Viggo Mortensen though like dude and it's crazy because I almost forgot he was even the dude from Lord of the Rings after one. It's like <laughs> going he, he he's one of those chameleon type of actors where he, he made me believe he I was is. like, he is. Oh, yeah, this guy and best I'm, Oscar nomination. And I'm kind of love this role. Go ahead, Jessica. Well, I'm kind of surprised. Like one, the director, the director of this is a. Uh, it's one of the Fairley brothers. Yeah, and Peter that's Fairley. wild to me. Wait, that, really? Yes. Yeah, that it's like you know, like the one of the directors of. There's something about Mary. Dumb and Dumber? And Dumb and mm-hmm. Dumber. And Dumb and Dumber 2. What? Directed this movie. And Dumb went, and Dumber wow. 2? Yeah. I, I told you guys, comedy is one of the hardest genres. Think about Robin Williams. Comedic genius, comedic genius wins Oscars. Because he's mm-hmm. such a great, like, dramatic actor. Dumb and Dumber 2, really? Dumb and Dumber 2? Respect. And then us. they made this. Jesus. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I haven't, I didn't hear, mm-hmm. I haven't heard much about the reaction to this film, but the fact that you're number one is really interesting to me. Justin, you're number one? Um, it was Into the Spider-Verse. Okay. So we move on. Yeah, Johnny, you're number one? <laughs> Is Black Panther, all right. and the reason why is because like here's the thing. So I've been, I've been talking to people like all week about this about how amazing like Spider Verse is, and some people go into the tra- uh, the trap of like comparing it to Black Panther, and I've heard like a lot of things. Because seriously, Black Panther again, I will not. It does have its problems. Like the third act does suffer from some things, but the thing about this is was that I teared up four times in this movie mm-hmm. because right. of a lot of things it's doing that people don't understand. Like yeah. for example, so you spend it, money on it. I'm just kidding. Anyway, oh. <laughs> because like, no, it's a good, it's a great movie. Yeah, because of the allegorical things it's doing. Because well, some people may not realize that it's telling the allegorical story of like African Americans are relationship with Africans because we're a whole time we're looking at like after slavery ended, why did you guys never come and get us? Yeah. Why did you leave us here in this like this lost tribe and everything like that? And that's how like our relationship has always been. But at the same time, though, you're hitting all these like, st- um, these points where it's like again, you look at Michael B. Jordan. He is the kid growing up in the hood, and growing up in the projects without a father and all these different things like that. And this is like kind of things that society like puts you on this path for. Even with all your potential going to MIT, this anger is just still inside of you. Mm-hmm. And he was such a great representation of that until like the moments again to this day that last line sticks with me. It was like we can help you. It's like he's like no. So you can just like bury me in the ocean with my ancestors who knew death was better than imprisonment. It's like, oh, oh my God. better than oh. bondage, yeah. But like, thank you, yeah. And so then that was just amazing. And then from that kid at the end, like, who are you? And the music comes in and everything like that. And again, <laughs> you just get so inspired by it. Also, the soundtrack, the soundtrack was so amazing for this movie. Kendrick. The mixture of like, again, just the actual like soundtrack and score compared to like the Kendrick Lamar and the Weekend Left soundtrack was hey, so amazing. Question for you: This is gonna be a tough one. I know. I don't know where to go to next. Better soundtrack? That's I know. That's what everybody go there. So the thing about this, but again, Black Panther, that's a tough one. That's so a tough amazing. One. And again, because it was like we were talking about Atlanta. Um, we were talking about Aquaman the other day, yeah. and I was talking about we we went to like to go see Atlanta's like all right, but then when we went to Wakanda, I was like, oh, it's Wakanda, <laughs> oh well, tears, Aquaman's, and then Aquaman's soundtrack was garbage. Yeah, it was, oh, terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. That's like a that's like a uh, a soundtrack that Jezzer would listen to. Pitbull, it's Sugar oh, Reels yeah. and Pitbull. Pitbull. That's a Josh. What that's a Josh Goldman soundtrack. Oh, I've ever heard one. Pitbull. It's only missing Nickelback. Why would you ruin uh, that 
the the Toto song, man. And then, no, exactly. And then the other thing that kind of gets to do is like we talked about Aquaman and Mirror, how Mirror's just there kind of there as a prop piece to be objectified, but every woman in this movie played a significant role, as you pointed out, Joe, with Angela Bassett and like all it. these other women, and like Sheree might get her own spinoff and everything. And then, sure. of course, we had the breakout roles we didn't expect with uh, Masa Hu. Masa Hu. What are you doing? It's challenge day. It was like what? <laughs> and then again, the how much money it made, how many people were like taking their children to Repeat see it and viewing? Like that. Repeat exactly. Viewing. People were dressing up and cosplaying to go see this film. And it's kinda like the reemergence of black cinema as well. Because here's the thing, you guys are all film buffs. Remember back in the nineties we had things like New Jack City mm-hmm. and things like mm-hmm. this, the brothers and all these different things where it was like you had like films be made with black leads, but then all of a sudden it just kinda went away and this movie kinda sparked that research. It's like, oh wait, we can do these films. Yeah. And so again, for me, that's my number one. Uh, I totally. A, oh, sorry, right. I agree with that. I was gonna say for best soundtrack. Well, I do love that Kendrick joint. That Spider Verse joint is lit. Oh, like man. here's the thing. Yeah. That Spider Verse can win best soundtrack, and I have no problem with that because I love the like Black Panther one. But unfortunately, was, it's probably gonna go to um, a Star Is Born. Probably. <laughs> but I literally listened to that. Uh, that that. Uh, sorry, the Spider Verse soundtrack all the way through. Yeah. yeah. Same. Well, and the uh, Christmas album, FYI. Yeah, it just came out, right? <laughs> uh, this has been a fun episode of Box Office Showdown. You can expect this every, hopefully every Saturday, where we debate movies, talk about movies, talk about the insides of movies, and I think next week would be a good one for what we're looking forward to for 2019. Because mm. uh, there's a lot of food movies coming out. I, I mean, The Joker is one of the movies at the top of my list. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're, it's they're, interesting. Yeah, Aveng- <laughs> who can say? Avengers Endgame? That was Shazam. Shazam, Shazam yeah. Lion being King. And everything like that. Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. a lot of movies coming out. Lion King, that's right, Aladdin. There's mm-hmm. a, we'll talk about the controversy with Aladdin next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's a lot of movies we can talk about for next week, and we're going to talk about our most anticipated of 2019, along with the box office showdown where we debate about who should be the king of the box office. Oh. Right now, currently standing at number one, is looks like it's going to be Aquaman. So, hey, get your trident and pitchforks ready. But uh, we'll see you guys Bumble next B. week. Uh, thank you for joining us. Where can everyone find you guys on social? Find me at Johnny P three one three on Instagram, Twitter, and Glum Road. And you can find me on again Saturdays on a show called Handshake Hangout, and on Thursdays on Superhero News Network, and on Sundays on our Facebook Live page on the Wrestling Show. Okay, you can find me on Instagram at Justin Quiz and Twitter at Justin Keys on, and of course Handshake Hangout every Saturday. Uh, hashtag Joe, that hashtag Joe. At Jazz or Zeus and Handshake Hangout and Ranger Rock. Oh, quick plug! Someone was asking what is the name of our Facebook page to watch the Wrestling Show. THS Wrestling and News. Boom. All right. Thank you. News and rumors, I think. <laughs> but anyway, just THS Wrestling, news and rumors. Uh, but that's going to do it for us, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you. At least I'll see you guys tomorrow on the Retro Range Wrap-Up. Johnny and I will also see you tomorrow right. talking about wrestling. But that's going to do it for us, guys. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And step to date with everything trending in, in deep, deep pop culture. culture. We out. Fast. You came too fast.